All right, it is Thursday, February 25th, just shy of one year since I last worked on these trees. As you may recall, the idea was to test out these new containers uh, from George Starkey. Uh, he said that these new containers promote amazing growth, and I saw some of the annuals he was working with. And then I figured, well, you know what? Let me compare that to uh, a bulb pan, a mum pot, and a pool filter basket. And as you can see, I did nothing for the year because right after I did this uh, test, which was March 9th of 2020, uh, five days, six days later, Andrew Cuomo closed down New York State and my life went to hell for the year. Um, and as I'm sure many of you have experienced as well. So I'm just now able to get back to these and take a look at them. I've had them sitting on the side waiting for my cameraman to give me a hand. So what we're going to do is run through each of these, clean them up, and then compare the growth and the way that I applied the fertilizer. I'm going to refresh the soil, put them back down for another year, and see what happens. I do not intend to do any design work. So let's start with a good old-fashioned bulb pan. This is how many inches? An 8-inch bulb pan and uh, it's, it was always my go-to when I was preparing plants to be made into bonsai because I could flatten the roots and get a fair amount of growth. So as you can see the weeds enjoyed it and it threw out some roots <laughs> but not not a huge amount of growth but we'll compare that to the other planters so that's my bulb pan And there's my label, Catlin Elm, January 29th, bulb pan test. January 29th. All right, so let's take a look at the filter basket. Soil really, roots came right through. We're growing onto the tabletop. Soil seems to have disappeared throughout the course of the year. However, the growth on this is tremendous, as you'll see by the wire scarring. This plant that I'm extricating is a volunteer. It is a um, some kind of flowering plant. I'm not sure. I went on Reddit and I had someone identify it for me, but it makes these cute little white flowers that look like miniature chrysanthemums so and I had a piece of it from years ago from one of the members of the National Chrysanthemum Society so you can see here all the wire scarring and how deeply embedded I'm <laughs> going to sneeze oh I'm allergic to that chrysanthemum dust. So we'll unwind this. Too deep for me to get in there with the wire cutter. But kind of like the shape. Now this is my 8-inch mum pan, I believe. Interesting. Least amount of roots, but most amount of bugs. That's those are mealy bugs. We'll have to get rid of them. And you can see I had my dollar store bamboo skewer to hold it in place. Pretty good roots, except for that mealy bug. 
Now this is the bulb pan, uh, the new Starkey pots. And this is one where I put the Osmocote in the bottom of the container because it has these grooves where it's supposed to be good. And you can see the Osmocote inside the root ball. And you can see a little slug right there. I miss my turtle. Used to be able to feed her slugs. All right. So we'll clean this up. And then we're going to clean up the last one and put them all side by side and see who gave me the best growth. I can always tell you who's, who's, who did good on moisture retention. Because I haven't watered these in two weeks. So I don't recall spending any special amount of time trying to arrange the roots on any of these, so I basically let them do their own thing. And this last one was Osmocote on top, not underneath. And again, I've got root mealybugs. You can see that white fuzziness. If I had a good magnifying glass or a way to zoom in, you would see their fuzzy little bodies sucking away at the juices on my tree. Yep, these will have to be treated. I spoke to my New York State spray guy the other day and he'll be in to apply whatever is legally permitted in New York State. Okay. So, I'm going to clear this junk out of the way, and then we're going to try and figure out who gave us the best growth, and we're going to refresh the soil, and then hit them with another round of Osmocote. Not sure at this point if I'm going to be doing any styling I really don't feel inspired to do any styling but I may do a quick nip and a tuck I do have to unwire this so I don't know if this is anything I can consider conclusive but they're all the same cultivar. They're all Catlin Elms. They all came from my, my parent plant. So now when we look at them, I think the bulb pan had the weakest results. It had the least amount of thickening, the least interesting roots. So I would say the bulb pan is is not impressive. Now this is my mum pot. Sometimes you'll get the ornamental kales in them. And this thing threw out some big growth. Probably the tallest growth I have. Very, very close internodes. Very interesting. This is, this is one of my go-tos. I like this one a lot. I like the bulb cans when I'm finishing up a tree and getting ready for a bonsai container. Now this one also had some very impressive thickening. How much of that was caused by the wire and how much of that is caused by the pot, I do not know. Uh, but I do like the branching on this one much better than the mum pot. And now I have my two Starkey pots. Decent thickening on this, lots of nice branching. Uh, pretty good for a smaller size bonsai. So, I'm not unhappy with that. This is the bulb, uh, Starkey pot with the soil on top. Be a nice little shoheen. 
Very interesting. I rather like it. Um, especially, it's, I said I wasn't going to design, but I already want to. I already want to design it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut everybody back. I'm going to root prune them, and then repot them. So even though I'm not designing, I'm going to prune with an eye towards the design. So I would make this one short 